This is my 3D printed macro pad that I made in a very unusual way. I wanted to make my own macro pad for a while now, but I didn't want to make it using an Arduino for no reason other than it's already been done and I wanted to try something different. I wanted to see if I could make one using a repurposed keyboard or other broken tech. I was scrolling through Facebook Marketplace and stumbled upon a game mouse that was being sold as is with a broken scroll wheel. It also had 12 macro buttons on the side and I thought this would make for a perfect repurposed macro pad. After testing out the macro functions with the Logitech software, I was confident that this would work so I started tearing it down to see what I was working with. This is the 12 macro keyboard. This will be the primary focus of this conversion. There are more buttons I could take advantage of, but for now I think 12 is fine. This white sticker thing that holds the domes for the switches in place needs to be removed to expose the contacts we'll be tapping into. To house everything, I went ahead and designed this very simple enclosure. It consists of a rectangular box that's 20 millimeters high by itself, but uh, with the added height of this, it'll be 21.5 millimeters high. Um, so it's not like it's not too big, but it could be smaller when we're dealing with macro pads. There are slimmer ones out there, but this is a DIY one in a very weird way, so I'm kind of okay with it. I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. Uh, the box itself has a cutout for the USB cable as well as four studs with holes that will allow for screws to pass through and force a thread to mount this faceplate. This faceplate is 1.5 millimeters high. It allows for the key switches to snap directly into it without the need of extra hardware to hold them into place. And once they are fitting and all that, it'll be screwed to the top of this and just increase that height a little bit. Um, so this should work. I measured the spacing of my keyboard that I use uh, to type on, obviously, so I'm hoping the spacing is close to that. If it is, I will be happy. Over here we have some more stuff. This is a cap that I found on Thingiverse. I'll leave the file for that in the description of this video. This isn't something I think I can design right now. It's a little, little too specific, uh, so I went and looked on Thingiverse for something and surprise there was one. Over here we have these weird um, cap adapters that I'll cover later on in the video as I'm not the greatest with continuity. I had no idea I'd be making these. This, this project was actually finished for about a week now and I'm just filming the voiceover parts now. And um, after I finished it I wanted better keys that were more functional for this macro pad and the ones I had on hand needed some sort of adapter in this that's where these come into play, but they're not really important right now. We're gonna continue on as if continuity is not an issue. So let's go ahead and print these two pieces, see how we did, and then print 12 of these. With all the pieces printed, I can now snap the key switches into place. I don't know much about keyboard switches, but these ones are very clicky, and the feel of them is making me want to make my own keyboard using these same switches, so I'm not sure what I just got myself into, but that might be a thing in the future. Now we can shove the mouse boards into the new housing. I removed the connector due to the height it added, so now the USB cable will have to be soldered directly to the PCB. I'll use some super glue to hold the switch PCB to the mouse PCB. This won't see much pressure, so I think this method of mounting it will be fine, although it seems like it should have a third support somewhere, but I don't think it'll be a concern.
And now it's time for what I think is the fun part, and that is wiring up all the switches so that they mimic the layout of the switches on the PCB. So, there are 12 switches in groups of 3. Each group has their own common line that they close to, so I'll wire up all the common connections first using bare 30 gauge wire. You're probably wondering why I didn't show the process of soldering the rest of the wires, and the reason for that is simple, I'm a moron. After all the wires were soldered to the switches, and after I started soldering them to the PCB, I realized that it could be done a lot cleaner than I initially thought. So of course I cut all the wires and started over. Now all I have to do is solder the wires in a mirrored fashion. I suppose I could have reused the previous wires, but 30 gauge wire doesn't like to bend back and forth a lot, so I threw all that scrapped wire into a bin that'll be used for future projects. The only thing remaining now is to push the 3D printed caps into place. The 3D printed caps are nice and all, but I've had these caps with a clear cover that allows for a label to be placed underneath. The only issue with these is that they aren't made for my switches, so I had to modify them and use that 3D printed adapter piece from earlier to make them work. The keys can now be mapped using the Logitech software. As far as testing goes, here are some of the keys working in WordPad. That's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this weird repurpose of a mouse project. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.